In the last 10 years in New South Wales, about 1,000 babies have been saved from death or disability through newborn blood spot screening. Newborn screening is a very important part of the first few days of a new baby's life. A simple blood test performed on your baby can tell us if certain rare medical disorders are present. If any problem is found, your baby can receive the best possible treatment. There is usually no family history of the disorder and it can occur in families just like yours. The newborn screening dried blood spot test is an important test for your baby. It is free and part of the normal care of newborn babies within Australia. Screening is strongly recommended as one baby in every 1,000 has a disorder which needs early diagnosis to avoid problems. Amongst the many disorders tested for are congenital hypothyroidism, cystic fibrosis, phenylketonuria or PKU, MCAD deficiency and other rare disorders of protein and fat metabolism. Each year in Australia there are over 300,000 babies born and about 300 are found to have a disorder. PKU was the first disorder that was screened for in newborn babies back in the 1960s. It is quite an uncommon disorder. In PKU, phenylalanine, which is one of the building blocks of protein, builds up in the body and the brain, and if we don't do something about it, then the high levels cause the brain not to develop normally. The treatment is very simple, a special diet. A baby can continue to breastfeed or be bottle fed, but must have a certain amount of a special formula every day. What's really great news is that we expect babies with PKU detected by newborn screening to grow up perfectly normally and be healthy. They'll be very well and everything will be perfectly fine if they stick to their diet. The first day at home, uh, we had some family over and um, we received a phone call from the children's hospital. It was the, the PKU nurse and she, um, she wanted to, to have a chat with us in relation to the newborn screening test result. Um, that it had um, come up with a, an indicator that um, Pippa might have had um, phenylketonuria or PKU for short. We had to uh, report back into the hospital just to do some uh, further tests. So that was quite an, a scary experience, but um, by the same token, I'm grateful that, um, that we actually had that phone call because we would have known that Pippa had PKU because you actually can't tell um, that a child has PKU or any of the other diseases that the newborn screening picks up. We were in shock at first because um, the doctors tell you that you've got this um, genetic condition and it's, and it's not very nice. Yeah. And you've got this beautiful, perfect baby in front of you that you don't think has anything wrong with her. And then when you go to the hospital, well, they do the tests and, and confirm that she had PKU and then um, her tra trajectory changed, really. There's no cure for PKU. The formula is very important because it makes up 80% of her diet. So she really needs to have the formula um, in order to be happy and healthy. With the newborn screening, when they said, look, would you like to take the test? Um, I knew that it was the right thing to do. It's gonna change the trajectory of your child if um, your child has something and you don't know about it, so. A little bit of pain from the needle mm. in the foot, yeah, it'd be a lot worse. My child's healthy. Both my children are healthy. They both took the test. I have PKU and that was picked up through newborn screening in August of 1977. I went on to live uh, a pretty ordinary life as a child. I'm now working in finance. Um, I'm a senior manager for a non-bank lender. I do have to still manage my diet uh, so that I'm able to give everything that I do the appropriate focus. So it's pretty important for me to stay on my supplement. Um, I have uh, a husband, a beautiful little girl, Matilda, who also underwent newborn screening um, to check if she had PKU. Came back negative and it was a really big relief being able to get that, uh, that result in quickly. My parents were very open about the fact that it, it wasn't a huge difference. It only involves really food and that on every other part I could live a fairly normal life and they really promoted that. I certainly wouldn't have been living a normal life. I wouldn't be in the position that I am. I wouldn't be able to manage the job that I'm currently in and I definitely don't think I'd be able to uh, 
manage the rigour of uh, two young children, a career and a family life. So I'm extremely grateful to newborn screening. Congenital hypothyroidism is one of the most common conditions we screen for in newborn screening. It is a condition which is present at birth in which the baby's thyroid gland is absent or does not produce normal levels of thyroid hormone. The thyroid gland is in the neck and it produces a hormone called thyroxine from towards the end of pregnancy. Up until then, the baby relies on the mother's thyroid hormone levels. Normal thyroid hormone levels are important for normal physical growth and brain development. Babies with congenital hypothyroidism may not have any medical problems when they are born, but if they are not diagnosed and treated early, they are at high risk of not growing well and poor brain development. Fortunately, we can detect congenital hypothyroidism early and we can prevent these problems with early treatment. The treatment is simple. We can just replace the thyroid hormone with an oral tablet preparation, which is given once a day. Children who receive early treatment for congenital hypothyroidism can be expected to have normal intelligence and normal growth and be just as healthy as children without hypothyroidism. Cystic fibrosis is a genetic condition that it primarily affects the lungs and the digestive system. Mucus that lines the lungs and digestive system is thicker and stickier than normal and it affects the normal functioning of these body systems. So in the lungs, bacteria can get stuck to this thick, sticky mucus and lead to infection. Repeated infections over time cause damage and scarring to the lungs. In the digestive system, the thick, sticky mucus blocks the passage of enzymes so that digestion of food is inadequate. This results in poor nutrition and not being able to put on weight properly. Newborn screening allows early detection of cystic fibrosis in babies. And the benefit of this is that we can start treatment at a much earlier age so that your baby can be healthy for longer. MCAD deficiency is another metabolic disorder, but this affects how the body can use fat for energy. The full name for MCAD deficiency is medium chain acyl-CoA dehydrogenase deficiency, which is why we abbreviate it. When babies and small children are very young, they rely on fat for energy when they're sick or have long periods without food. Babies with MCAD deficiency can't break down fat all the way and will need extra calories when they are sick. Without the extra calories, they can quite quickly become much sicker than babies who do not have MCAD deficiency and could end up in a coma. When they're well, however, most children with MCAD deficiency need no special treatment. Very small children may need to be woken during the night to be fed so they don't go for too long without food. When children with MCAD deficiency are well, they don't need any special treatment and grow up normally. These are the most common disorders detected on newborn screening. The program can detect many more disorders, about 30 in all, but most are very rare. Newborn blood spot screening may be discussed with you in either prenatal classes or after your baby is born, or in both. You'll be given the information brochure called Newborn Blood Spot Screening Test to Protect Your Baby. Your midwife will then discuss the content with you and answer any questions you might have. If you want more information about the test, talk to your doctor who will be willing to discuss any concerns you may have. The midwife who is going to take the sample from your baby will ask you if you want to have your baby tested. She or he will ask you if you understand the information you have been given and if you have any questions. You will then be asked to tick the boxes on the back of the card and sign. The sample will then be collected by the midwife. The test only needs a few drops of blood taken from the baby's heel and collected onto a special sample card. This usually happens when your baby is two or three days old and either in the hospital shortly before discharge or at a home visit by your midwife. Ideally, the sample is collected during breastfeeding as this is less stressful for your baby. Once the sample has been collected, it is then dried and sent to the laboratory for testing. The first few days can be a busy time, so if you are not sure if your baby has had the test, please ask your midwife or doctor. If your baby's results are normal, you are not contacted. If a repeat sample is requested, it does not mean your baby is affected. Sometimes a test result is unclear, the sample is unsuitable for testing, or there is a borderline result. 
This means a few babies will have to have a second test to ensure we have an accurate result. You can always call the Newborn Screening Laboratory if you have any questions about a second dried blood spot test. In a small number of babies, the second test will also be abnormal and require further investigation. You will be contacted by a paediatrician or specialist who will arrange for further testing and inform you of the results. All disorders can be treated with either medication or special diet. After testing has been completed on the newborn screening dried blood spot cards, they are stored for some time in a secure location. The laboratory will keep your card for a minimum of two years for quality assurance and audit purposes, as well as medical uses. If you do not consent to long-term storage, you can request to have your sample returned to you, otherwise it will be destroyed. If you consent to long-term storage, the card will be stored until your child is 18 years old. The card may be accessed for additional testing that has been recommended for your baby or to provide new medical information for the family. If testing is to happen outside the newborn screening program, your written consent is required. If you have given consent, excess sample from your baby's card can be used for ethically approved research, but only if there is no identifying information accompanying the sample. Your children depend on you to keep them healthy. We hope this video has helped you understand why it is important to have your baby tested. A few drops of blood could make a huge difference in your baby's life. It can completely change the outcome for a baby. If you have any questions, please ask your midwife or paediatrician or telephone the newborn screening laboratory. Our concern is to make sure your baby is as healthy as possible. If a disorder is found, your baby will have the best chance to live a long and healthy life.